Aloha, my rootin' tootin' base head flutter bums. <laughs> Today, we're gonna be fixing our flanges on the ever misinformed Smash family. By the way, I said chest space family. Consider this video an inauguration into your beatbox career if you can sit here and watch this whole thing. <laughs> Think of your voice as a wind instrument, like a flute, for example. There are lots of functions within the tunnel of your throat that can be activated in various combinations, like the keys of a flute. But instead of them changing the pitch of the sound, they serve as various filters for breathing in and out, be it breathing, snoring, talking, singing, or yes, beatboxing. Buddy, ah! You can control the pitch, though, of most of these levels of filter, some individually from others and some not at all. Pretty cool. A basic example of this level slash filters analogy would be breathing out of your false folds. <sighs> Located here. In combination with your true vocal folds. Located right around here. Vibrating. These conflict with each other to create like a robotic tone, like which we in the beatboxing world call throat bass or Tuvian throat singing. In the singing world, it's also just called throat singing. It's been done for ages in Mongolia, ancient tribal cultures of Africa, Norse cultures in Scandinavia, and Inuit cultures in Northern Alaska. This is all according to David Larson, a really valuable source in vocal singing. Throat bass isn't in the chest bass family, but this kind of gives some context to how the filters thing works. The most basic bass in the chest bass family is just called chest bass or fire breathing by the singing community. <laughs> This sound is outward, which means breathing out, as are all of the other basses in this video. This airy, bassy sound is created when you breathe out through your epiglottis, located right there. It's kind of like a triangle shape. This vibrates above your true vocal folds, located again right there, to create an airy, bassy tone. That is not an E. layered with an almost whispery tone right above your larynx. Chest bass is a very versatile sound and can be even used as a main bass. Granted, you won't have very much control of the sound and it will be hard to distinguish the pitch, or you can use it as a secondary, more gritty stab, like Elise from Canada, <laughs> or Codfish from Australia. As if you're watching this video and you don't know who Codfish is. It's hard to tell, but Den from Canada's main bass also seems to be some sort of variant of throat and or chest bass, so do with that what you will, and take that with a grain of salt. Oh, fair warning for any non-vocal bass or beatboxers watching this video, it can get a little bit boring. So although you'll severely damage my retention and vibration statistics, thus hurting my growth as a young creator. <laughs> you can click away from this video if you don't want to learn a bunch of insanely nerdy stuff about like vocal throat anatomy and stuff. Or you can also make use of my laborious efforts to put this video into chapters. You should see them right down here. If you click pause on the video or something, it'll come up in little blocks sections labeled. So click wherever you want to and yeah, enjoy that. Real quick, I'll also put in the description everything I cite or take information from. That means you don't have to just take my word for it. You can go look at sources yourself. But a lot of this stuff is just like common knowledge on like the vocal world. <laughs> also in the description of this video, I'm going to put the entire script for this video, probably in a Google Doc because there will be enough space in the description box. But yeah, so I don't want to hand any captions because that takes a lot of work and I don't like doing that. Another thing to know is I will only be calling all these bases by their common names, like in the vocal bass and beatboxing communities because I'm pretty sure every vocal bass ever done has been called monster bass, demon bass, or alien bass, and that's very cringe. Another thing I should probably mention is that I'm not going to be covering the history of these bases and their uses because that's probably not as important information as the anatomical breakdowns and suggested uses, so yeah, also I don't want to research that. <laughs> Zombie bass, also called CLR bass or loose chest bass, is basically just a really loose version of chest bass. <laughs> What I mean by loose is that the epiglottis, again, right there, is, it, it's like in flaps like this. And doing normal chest bases like that, but doing 
zombie base or CLR base, they are they're expanded and more open like that. There's no exact place where chest base becomes zombie base, but there's kind of like a spectrum between chest, oh my gosh, I'm just now realizing how bad my handwriting is, and zombie base. But there's definitely an audible difference between and there's kind of like another rattle that kicks in around there. Zombie Base was popularized by CLR from Australia, but since then it has been used by a handful of beatboxers. Coldness from the US, Jenkins from the US, and Match also from the US, to name a few. I guess Americans like their Zombie Base. Okay, so I just talked to Alchemy for about three hours about bass stuff. This was during the same time as I did the interview later on in this video, and he was trying to convince me that Zombie Zombie bass is a combination of loose chest bass and evil bass. We argued about that and he said he reached out to Match, known for his zombie bass. Match said he was trying to copy Coldness, which if you don't know who Coldness is, he's a US beatboxer and he uses hard bass a lot. Hard bass without the texture, so finished out of he uses but I wasn't convinced because zombie bass is such a loose sound and evil bass is such a tight, like, tight epiglottal sound. But he said that Match said that the little squeak that's in zombie bass, that's in there, that is evil bass, but on one side. It's true that is on one side. For me, it's the left. If I try to do it on the right, it's harder to do and it doesn't really work naturally. Kind of interesting. But Alchemy was trying to convince me that that is evil bass or a form of evil bass or a part of evil bass. And I was like, there's no way. No, that is not connected to evil bass. It's not in the same part of the throat. It's about on the same level, but it's not in the same place. But then I realized after doing zombie bass some more, there is an evil bass in there. It's really, really mellow and it's hard to hear, but is in you hear that? I just went from zombie bass to evil bass to zombie bass. It's very mellow because zombie bass is an airy sound and evil bass is completely closing off the air, but it is in there, which means that actually zombie bass is a three part sound. That squeak is cartilage pressing against the side of your throat due to the position, just like what would happen if you folded a piece of paper in half and blew into it, it would go that's basically what's happening in your throat where the squeak comes from. So I'm not one to like try to complicate sounds, but zombie bass really is three parts. And also this means that there are technically two other basses or three in the epiglottal chest bass family. So one it would technically be a bass just because of the way it works is that squeak sound, not named yet. <laughs> Second sound would be the combination of that and just loose chest bass without the evil bass. <laughs> And then the third sound is just evil bass and loose chest bass, which is that's without the squeak. So yeah, I'm not one to stretch out basses. And I know a lot of people would say, technically these aren't three different basses. They're just add-ons to it, like a filter, like, or layering a whistle on top of it, which will be covered later in this video. Like, but where this differs is that it's actually multiple layers within the throat. It's not just stuff that's outside of the throat, like superficial factors, like a whistle or a scratch. Evil bass is a very grimy sound, kind of like griff bass. Evil bass is a sound that comes from three stooges of the vocal world, the epiglottis, the hyoid bone, and the suprahyoid cartilage. This is a very tight sound and it happens naturally higher up than chest bass or especially zombie bass would. Almost all the way up to near the uvula, which is the dangly thing 
located right here. And the pharynx right here, not to be confused with the larynx that is down here like your Adam's apple. Some well-known users of Evil Bass include ABH from the UK, Hunty Beats from the US, and Max from Israel. No, not his nasal plus Evil Bass combo, but you know, he used to use Evil Bass a lot before he learned how to do it nasally. <laughs> Hard bass, also called trace bass by Crackbone. Shout out to Californian beatboxers, by the way. We need more of them because it has three components very similar to Evil Bass. This has a little bit more heaviness and presence. It's fun to use in short little stabs and beats, kind of like how Max uses his Evil plus Naval Bass combo. <laughs> Hard bass is really similar to evil bass. Consider them sister basses, two little demonic sisters. Though they share these similarities, there are also some pretty distinct differences between these two sounds. First of all, with hard bass, there's a little bit more space in the epiglottis, letting in just like a tiny bit of chest bass into it. <laughs> Another difference between these sounds is that hard bass has the tongue position of like troth bass or a post snare or an air scratch. This takes the sound from this to this also feels lower in the throat than evil bass does, but that could also just feel like that because the epiglottis is a little bit more open. Some common users of hard bass are Dillo from India, Pono from Hawaii, and Mr. Android from Chile. <laughs> Also, I guess there's technically a non-vocalized benja bass or pressurized chest bass. Though it probably won't sound too good, it'll sound a little bit like you're in fifth grade and you're trying to scare little kids by doing a monster voice. So though that's not pretty, here it is, I guess. <laughs> Same thing with non-vocalized griff bass. I think this actually might be the bass that Roham uses in his Froggy In My Tummy. I know it's a weird named routine, but that's also an inference. Okay, now we're going to be covering the vocalized versions of these basses. Vocalized basically just means layered with speaking voice, be it chest slash modal voice, head voice slash falsetto, high polyphonic voice, low polyphonic voice, strained polyphonic, there are a lot of types of polyphonic voices, by the way, polyphonic means two voices at once, or the whistle register, all through the true vocal folds vibrating. I will include the higher counterpart of all of these basses near the end of this video in a list. <laughs> Vocalized stress bass is one of my favorite basses because it's just so satisfying to do. Has the same physics as chest bass, but you're adding a layer of modal voice one octave above the root note of chest bass. Fun fact, we actually have proof that chest bass and vocalized chest bass are done in the epiglottis because of stroboscopic footage done on sync from India at researchers at a neck and head surgery center. Uh, epiglottis. Epiglottis, okay. To learn this bass, you have to practice your chest bass control and the interval between your voice and the chest bass a lot. Some common users of this bass are Collapse from France, Biscuit from the US, and Sin from Germany. His has a pretty unique texture. <laughs> This one's heavy. This one's heavy. This bass has hardly been researched, documented, or performed, but it is honestly one of my favorite basses. <laughs> That definitely felt like it should have been faster, but that's fine. I'm gonna leave it anyway. 
I've only seen one other beatboxer use this bass besides myself, and that is Remix from South Africa. Shout out to him. I can definitely say that this bass has huge potential. I only discovered this bass about a month and a half ago, but I really like it, and I plan on in the future working on it a lot more. It's one of those basses that's just really satisfying to get right. Vocalized Zombie Bass has pretty much the same mechanics as Zombie Bass, except it has a layer of modal voice, again, layered in with it in a very specific pocket that's really hard to get into. <laughs> Love this sound. <laughs> Vocalized Evil Bass has also been researched very little, as will be the rest of the basses in this video. It's the vocalized counterpart of Evil Bass, and it has the potential to be really sick, even though it hasn't been fully explored yet. <laughs> This bass seems to be evil bass with modal voice, an octave, and nine semitones above it. Admittedly, it was really hard to determine the note of the evil bass part though, so that could be completely wrong. That was my research. Some users of this bass are mix effects from Portugal. Oh man, that guy is so sick. Love how he uses this bass. And TMJ from the US used to be called DJ Bean. <laughs> <sighs> blah blah blah, vocalized counterpart of hard bass, blah blah blah. <laughs> Same interval as vocalized evil bass, just includes the more open epiglottal position, a lower position in the throat physically, and the troth texture thing. <laughs> Some users of this bass are Blacken from Chile, as well as Mr. Android from Chile. <laughs> Pressurized vocalized chest bass, also known as Benja vocalized chest bass, named after Benja from the Netherlands, is very similar to chest bass in position and tonality. Although, the more pressurized variation has a tighter epiglottis. That creates a different interval between the, I don't know what my hand is doing. That creates a different interval between the chest voice and the chest bass. This is in the mid range frequency of your voice and it should be an octave and one fifth above is modal voice and you know, an octave and one fifth below is pressurized chest bass, and this is all according to Alchemy's vocal bass research, link in the description. He also makes use of overtones from lip positions. These are notes that develop from resonance within your oral cavity. This further pronounces the two tone tonality of this bass. I think it's something like this. <laughs> Some users of this bass are obviously Benja himself from the Netherlands, GTS from the country Georgia, not the state, and Den from Canada. By the way, Den is killing it right now, and I can only assume that he's going to be a world champion at some point. Griff bass, named after Griff from the UK, is basically somewhere in between really tight chest bass and really, really lazy evil bass. Take all this and layer it with modal voice. <laughs> Griff bass, like hard bass, evil bass, vocalized hard bass, and vocalized evil bass is a hyoid bone and super hyoid muscle sound. Its sound is a little bit reminiscent of unvocalized throat bass, which I will talk about in a future upcoming video. Again, say it with me. If this is video does well. Not many people use this bass, but I'll let you know if I find some examples. Just kidding. It's a video. I can't tell you, stupid. <laughs> By the way, all vocalization in these vocalized basses comes from the true folds located right here, just like 
a little nugget of information, if you will. Bam. I have been in love with this sound ever since the release of the 2015 shootout battle between Alexino from France and Slizzer from France, where he does his everyday you're in my mind routine. By the way, love decoy from the US's cover of that. Sounds sick. This was when I was knee high to a grasshopper. Here's Alchemy from Iowa's take on Slizzer Bass. Hey guys, Alchemy Beats here. Um, I wrote up a vocal bass resource document on the Beatbox subreddit. Uh, my goal is to have as many people understand how to do these bases, how they work, and how to help others learn how to do them as possible. And so um, we can increase our collective knowledge of these, and also so we can increase our safety profile of learning these without hurting our voices or our throats. Uh, I, I don't at all want to take any kind of credit for the knowledge I'm spreading. I just want to have a centralized place for people to go to who are passionate about these vocal bass abilities that the human beatbox has all go to one place to understand them. That's my project, that's my mission. And uh, if you ever have new information or um, new bases that you have discovered or have heard about or can do yourself, I'm always open to um, you know you guys sending me a message or leaving comments on my channel uh, and, and uh, sharing the knowledge with me so I can modify and uh, evolve our collective understanding that we are you know, currently endeavoring toward. Think of your epiglass like a snake, okay? It's very long, right? When you do chest bass, the lowest, most loosest kind of chest bass, the whole thing is vibrating. It's a very massive construct. So massive things produce lower oscillation frequencies. La, 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 la. So the low vocalized chest bass, think of letting the whole thing vibrate. It's all floppy. Nothing is tight. La, la, la. Slizzard bass, think of this like you are still vibrating your epiglottis and your voice, you're still vibrating the worm, okay? But the difference is you are isolating the vibration of that worm only to the tip. You're only letting his head vibrate, only the very top 2% of the whole thing. The rest of it is rigid and streamlined. To Vickery Beast's example of your throat being like a flute, like a windpipe, it's almost like your throat being the most streamlined version of this windpipe. <laughs> yes, it's a chest space, but if people don't understand how to tighten your throat to get the chest space to evolve up from the two octaves under the voices note to the one octave under the voices note to be scissor based, the more you isolate the vibration area of whatever you're trying to oscillate, the higher frequency it will produce, the higher note it will produce. And coincidentally, it feels like the part of your epiglass that's vibrating, being allowed to vibrate in scissor bass, is near the top of your throat and near the back. Just like a lip buzz is to a lip oscillation. So previously in my vocal bass scholar journey, I had propagated the claim what scissor bass is, is a hybrid of throat bass, Kagiria, Mongol tube and throat singing, and vocalized chest bass, the generic name for I now know that this may be incorrect. Why people may have thought this was, I don't believe that people were ever trying to say that slizzer bass is your true folds, your false vocal folds, and your epiglottis, all three of them vibrating at once. I had misinterpreted this as such. I thought that they meant that done at the same time as would give you slizzer bass is a hybrid of throat bass and vocalized chest bass in the respect that it has the octave range of throat bass, but it has the actual sound architecture and sound structure of vocalized chest bass, or rather it's just vocalized chest bass wow, 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 done in throat bass's octave. People like you and me, we've been dying to have something like this and there wasn't anything like this. So we created the supplier of that need that we had that wasn't being fulfilled by anyone else currently. Maybe. 1% of them may be inspired to do something like this, but build off of our knowledge and do even better. It's starting the conversation out there. And that's that's part of history. You know, that's way more important than if it gets like well known. Like we forgot who invented the lip roll, but if he didn't, then none of us would be able to do it, you know? So that kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate uh, you giving me the opportunity to share that with uh, your fans and your subscribers, my friend. And uh, please, everybody, subscribe to Vickery Beast if you haven't already. He's a wonderful tutorialist, and he is an incredibly talented beatboxer. And uh, he's uh, he's definitely going to be instrumental in us understanding these vocal bases as well. Even though I know he uh, doesn't just focus on these, he's a great ally and comrade to have in that scholar's journey. <laughs>
Man, this sound is heavenly. Named after Bass Ventura from the UK. Out of the couple sounds I wish I knew, this one is definitely at the top of the list. I mean, obviously, unless you count remixes, vibration bass, which is either a texture or a sound, you know, different sound from that, or Max's nasal bass, which also hasn't been deconstructed, or NL from Morocco's bass, speculated to be some sort of vocal fry subharmonic technique. Definitely agree with that, even though it was potentially mislabeled due to communication issues between David Larson, a uh, bass singer, really great channel by the way, I'll put one of his videos in the description because I have mentioned it, and NL himself. Another sound that's kind of like a fantasy sound to learn is Adi Kerang from Indonesia's high bass, which I mean, apparently that is supposed to be some sort of griff bass combined with nasal stop. I mean, okay, maybe. Sorry about the tangent, this is what Nomzi from Germany said about base Ventura base. Here we go. <clears throat> Here we go. Hey, hey, wait, my shirt go. Here we go. These will either be in high polyphonic voice, head voice, or whistle register, depending on what's easiest for the sound or what sounds coolest. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Oh, you wanted me to say something wise and insightful? Oh, why didn't you just say so, Buttercheeks? This sound has been used by D'Lo from the UK, Vocoda from the US, and not to mention, Slizzer from France. This is also called Pash Polyphonic Voice. <laughs> Special Oh, sorry, I'll take off the sunglasses. I've only seen Pash from Russia himself use this sound, but I am sure that it has been used by other beatboxers at some point in time. Users of this sound include TMJ from the US, Napalm from the US as his crow sound, and One Drain from Russia. We will forever feel his bass. <laughs> One guy that is an absolute boss at this sound is Blackened from I am just now realizing that these sounds in the high vocalized section all have a very similar and frankly not pretty pleasant sound to them. Users of this bass include Griff from the UK, Dzak1 from Indonesia, haven't heard of him until I read Alchemy's vocal bass resource, and potentially Adi Kerang from Indonesia, but there's definitely some debate on that one. <laughs> I have never heard of this bass, nor have I ever done it, and I don't think anyone else has. Maybe they have, but in theory it should exist, and in theory I should also be able to do it, so here that goes. Okay, I am just convinced that these are all the same sound, just like slightly different variations. <laughs> Again, I haven't seen any users of this base, so we can leave this part blank, whatever that means. 
we get to bring back the man, the myth, the legend, Nomzi, for this one. Spoiler alert, we didn't. Oops. Hello, I'm Vino's windscreen. I'm here to tell you that users of this base I know of are BP from Germany, Base Ventura from the UK, obviously, duh, and I can only assume Beatbox Infinite from the US. I think it's the US, because he can do low vocalized BV bass. <laughs> One thing to remember is that there's so much variation within these bases. It's not just cut and dry from the examples I've shown you. All of these bases can be projected nasally through your nasal cavity instead of your oral cavity, just like humming is to singing. Hmm, ha, hmm, ha, hmm, ha, hmm, ha. and no two vocal bases from anyone anywhere on this planet sound the same. Just like speaking voices, everyone's is completely unique to them. Another thing to know is that for every single one of these bases, you have limitless textures, lip positions, tongue positions, vocalized pitches, and also sometimes you can pitch the actual bass itself, the epiglottal part. Oh, and tongue rolls. <laughs> Outward lip rolls, not lip rolls, but lip rolls. They're called that in the singing world. And oscillations. <laughs> uvular rolls, and whistles. You can combine any of these bases with pretty much any outward whistle, like the pucker whistle, <laughs> warbling whistle, bird whistle, outward case snare and double outward case snare whistles. That second one is special sound of mine. Ballsy whistle, decoy whistle trill, high pucker whistle, whatever this special whistle of mine is, pizzicato whistle, just like Remix does with his vocalized zombie bass, which he labels as vocalized chest bass, but it's vocalized zombie bass, laser whistle, hollow whistle for some sounds, tongue flu for some, various types of palate whistles, and countless others. People are discovering new whistles all the time. It really opens up doors to possibility, and I know that sounded sarcastic, but I mean that totally genuinely. You know how everyone really, really loves like super long outros? Well, I sort of decided on this. 